Hello everyone, this is Business Incorporated on Channel Television. I am Bisi Adebayo in today for Chimeze Obiwago. On today's program, Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari assures Nigerians of his administration's commitment to address infrastructural deficit in 2018 and high expectations as Liberian President-elect John Ware faces a task of restoring the country's economy. Plus, Namibia's foreign reserves hit five-month low. Well, stock markets are closed in most parts of the world today to mark the new year. But let's review the numbers on the last trading day of 2017. And we kick off here in Nigeria, where the stock markets managed to close above the 38,000 level after much fluctuations in the month of December. South Africa was up 0.94%, while Egypt closed its last trading day on Thursday, also up 0.75%. Nairobi was also up 0.92%. And in the Middle East, United Arab Emirates stock markets ended 2017 as one of the world's performing emerging markets. On Thursday, the Dubai index rose 0.73%, while Abu Dhabi's index added 0.66%. In Saudi Arabia, the index rose 0.41% on Thursday, and Qatar's index rose 03 and in the U.S., stocks ended 2017 lower, but the S&P is still posted its best year since 2013. The S&P 500 closed about half a percent lower, while the Nasdaq Composite posted gains of 11 of 12 months in 2017, a first for the tech-heavy index. The Dow posted a 0.67 percent decline on Friday. Away from those numbers now, Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari has assured Nigerians that his administration is making intense efforts to address the challenges ranging from the current fuel crisis to the country's huge infrastructural deficit. In his New Year message, President Buhari says this is necessary for Nigeria to achieve global economic competitiveness as targeted under the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. This year promises to be for a better in our quest for change. Unfortunately, I am saddened to acknowledge that for many, this Christmas and New Year holidays have been anything but merry and happy. Instead of showing love, companionship, and charity, some of our compatriots chose this period to inflict severe hardship on us all by creating unnecessary fuel scarcity across the country. I am determined to get to the root of this collective blackmail of all Nigerians and ensure that whatever groups are behind this manipulated hardship will be prevented from doing so again. We are going to make significant inroads in advancing road, rail, and power projects across the country. The Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is one of the drivers of this government's commitment to renew and increase Nigeria's stock of infrastructure in order to achieve global economic competitiveness as targeted under the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. With regards to railways, we have set ourselves ambitious targets. Already in construction stage is the Lagos Kano Standard Gauge Railway. The line should reach Ibadan from Lagos by the end of this year and will carry 2 million passengers per year and 5 million tons of cargo will be transported every year, giving a substantial boost to the country's economy. Construction of the Kano to Kaduna segment is expected to commence this year and reach Kaduna by the end of 2019. By the end of 2021, the two ends will be joined so that we will have standard gauge railway across the main north-south trading route. Management of federal roads maintenance agency has been reconstituted and has been charged with a 12-week rapid intervention in road repairs to cover 
all the geopolitical zones. Power remains a concern to this government because too many people still do not have a regular and reliable supply. Several Meriban projects have been revived. Transmission Company of Nigeria can now distribute all the 7,000 megawatts that can be generated. The government is slowly stabilizing the economy. It was in order to change the steady and steep decline that we adopted the more sustainable policies and programs captured in the economic recovery plan. Diversification efforts have resulted in improved output, particularly in agriculture and solid minerals sectors. The relative exchange rate stability has improved manufacturing sector performance. We have got to get used to discipline and direction in economic management. The days of business as usual are numbered. Two years ago, I appealed to people to go back to the land. I am highly gratified that agriculture has picked up, contributing to the government's effort to restructure the economy. Rice imports will stop this year. I have kept a close watch on the ongoing debate about restructuring in court. No human law or edifice is perfect. Whatever structure we develop must periodically be perfected according to changing circumstances and the country's socio-economic developments. We Nigerians can be very impatient and want to improve our conditions faster than may be possible, considering our resources and capabilities. When all the aggregates of nationwide opinions are considered, my firm view is that our problems are more to do with process than structure. However, there is a strong case for a closer look at the cost of government and for the public services long used to extravagance, waste, and corruption to change for the better. As the election season approaches, politicians must avoid exploiting ethnicity and religion by linking ethnicity with religion and religion with politics. Such must be avoided at all costs if we are to live in harmony.